All right. So some of the discussion points we're going to go over, and again, a lot of this stuff is on this cheat sheet right here. Um, so hold on to that uh, for future reference. Uh, but we're going to talk about blade length, the uh, optimal blade length for, for um, cutting, as well as uh, loading the media and expand the uh, future. Yeah. One quick question. Um, the 8,000, is it pretty much similar to that? Yeah, the 8600 to 8000 really the main difference is uh, the Ethernet. Um, yes. So the 8000 had an optional Ethernet card, and the 8600 comes with it. So you're going to be able to get me an optional what? card. I don't know what's going on about. We we run a joke. Yeah, I know, I know. The manufacturers stopped uh, making them, and we didn't have access to them anymore. So we don't have any more Ethernet cards. As a matter of fact, I have an 8000. I don't have one on mine either. Yeah, it's. Yeah, it was it was a bummer. I don't know what happened in Japan. Well, they find it. Pardon? They find it, so we buy an 8600. Yeah, they get it out of the 8600. So anyway, there, that's one of the big differences. The other difference is that there's a new main board in the 8600. So it does a better job at reading registration marks. It actually has a feature where it slows down the um, RMS system to read registration marks, especially on a highly reflective material. Um, and then it has uh, another feature where it kind of feeds forward a new directional pattern for really thick material. Um, so those are some of the newer features in that. Also, the feature I'm going to talk about today is the ability to put in registration marks on the inside of your artwork instead of on the outside. And that's a feature of the 8600. And it just, as a matter of fact, today was the first time I ever used it. I just used it an hour ago. And so that's one of the newer features in the 8600. Other than that, the 8000 speed force track is all pretty much the same. Okay. Um, so we're going to talk about loading media and expand is a feature that we've had in our cutters for many, many, many years. Um, what expand does is let's say I'm cutting. Um, some material and I want to cut to the edge of the material. The cutter reads the inside of the, of the wheels, okay? When I turn on expand, I can get a quarter inch on either side more. And it will actually read on the outside of the wheels when it initializes, okay? So in the past, that typically was only used for cutting just regular colored vinyl, okay? So you get a little bit of Mario cut. What we've done now is put in the ability to read um, on the outside of those wheels for printing cut applications as well. Okay. So I'll discuss that expand feature and show you how to access it. It is, again, it's, it's changing, um, but I'll, I'll show you on the machine as well. Um, tangential emulation, if you're cutting really thick material, sandblast mask, um, a lot of people have been asking me about cutting motocross laminate lately. Um, when you're cutting thick material or even even uh, reflective prismatic type material, uh, you use a tangential emulation. Okay, and I'll, I'll go over that what it looks like. But it actually what it does is the head lifts up, cuts beyond. Let's see, I'm cutting the square. So let head lifts up, cuts beyond the square, comes down. I mean, it comes down, cuts beyond the square, lifts up, comes back, comes down, cuts beyond a, a yellow, and then so you have nice clean four side <coughs> squares. Okay. And it also works really well with uh, small, small tasks. Okay. And then um, uh, just make sure that you guys upgrade your firmware. And Adam will be here to kind of discuss that with you guys uh, a little bit later on. Uh, make sure you have the most current firmware. Okay, so the proper blade length setting. You should really set the blade to the depth of almost to the back row of the material. Okay. And that's fine if you're just cutting a vinyl. But if you're going to do a perforation cut, you're going to actually need to set the blade so you're cutting a little bit through the, the back row of your vinyl. So the way I usually test is I, I uh, expand the blade out and I put it to the side of the material to see if it's just the blade is just beyond the, the, the thickness of the material. Sometimes I'll slice the side of the material to make sure that it just cuts it through. Okay, that's if I'm doing a perf cut. But otherwise, just regular cutting, you just want a very small tip of that blade exposed. You get the best cut quality out of it that way. Okay? And also do your test cut function. And we have a test cut feature in the software and on the cutter itself. So if you get test cut, it'll cut out a square and a triangle. If you can weave the square away and the triangle stays behind, uh, that usually means you're cutting deep enough. If you weave the triangle away and you just see a slight score on the back of, the, of your carrier sheet, 
that's the optimum. If it's cutting through all the way, then you need to back it up a little bit. And then if it's not cutting deep enough, you can't weed it really well, mm -hmm. you need to add you know, a little bit more force to it. Okay. Um, loading media. Um, when you're loading rolls media, we have this, this brake lock on the back of the FC8000 and the 8600, um, where you can pull out media, um, lock that brake, you keep your media nice and taut, and make sure you line it up to the lines of the back, lock it down, and release the media brake. Okay? And that's, that's the purpose of the media brake, is to really kind of give you the best um, alignment for the media. Expand, I, I touched base on that uh, recently. Um, expand, um, we've had that feature for many years, but now it works with arms. And, and when I demonstrate the uh, machine cutting, you'll see um, how that actually works okay, and how you can um, benefit from that. Tangential emulation, um, as I mentioned earlier, there's a couple modes of tangential emulation. I typically use mode one. And you can see by the illustration there that triangle that's being cut. The tangential emulation will cut beyond the, um, the triangle. And the head will lift up. It'll start beyond the triangle and come down. So again, you get nice clean cuts, especially if you're cutting sandblast mask, uh, prismatic material, motocross laminates. Uh, motocross and also the prismatic material, we recommend extra push rollers to help get that flat. I don't know if you guys ever cut that stuff. It tends to want to kind of bow in the middle. Um, it'll, it'll scrape the media if you don't have extra push rollers on it. So the 8,000, 8,600, you can actually add extra push rollers to that machine. Um, you have to be service authorized, regional is service authorized, so we'll you know, add on this team go out there. And, and actually add those on there. How many rollers could you add to it? Do you we add say, one for every roller? We say two, Okay. but it, there's a limitation to two, but okay. we, I've seen more okay. added. Cool. Um, there are some really, really thick motocross lines that are out there, and to keep it flat on the larger cutters, like the 64 inch or 54 inch, mm -hmm. um, I've seen them add like four additional. Okay. Okay, so it's, and then it keeps it pretty, <coughs> pretty straight to the, Sometimes people get to the point though where they use a flatbed cutter, we sell a flatbed cutter, yeah. and at that point, you know, you have a vacuum table that holds down the material. So there's a lot of DOTs that will use that so to cut prismatic as well, okay. or the thicker laminate, the more cross laminates. So um, <coughs> mode one, you can see it cuts over, it does overcut on all uh, three sides of that triangle. Mode two just does an overcut, just like you're maybe routing. You know, it has kind of a start point just before the image, and then an end point that's just beyond the image. And okay, you can set the start and end point up to the distance you want. That all can be set up on the in the software. So Cutting Master three or um, uh, how many guys use Cutting Master three? How many guys still using Cutting Master two? Okay. So Cutting Master three is very visual. And so when you click on it, it gives you these menus where you can make these changes. Um, Cutting Master 2, not so much, but you can still go on the uh, cutter menu and actually turn on tangential emulation for whatever kind of <coughs> If I'm using Cutting Condition 1 or 2 or 3, you just choose tangential mode and that'll actually be on the cutter. Otherwise, you can, you can do that on the software. And the software of Cutting Master 3 is bi-directional communication, so it constantly communicates with the cutter. So when I set something up on a cutter, I change the speed or force, it'll tell the software that I've made a change to the speed and force, and vice versa. If I make changes in the software to speed and force, it'll tell the cutter that there's a new speed and force and I'll update it automatically. Okay. Hey Glenn. Yeah. Um, the if you have a, a plotter that for some reason you can't get Cut Master 3 to work on, you can upgrade your firmware on your plotter to the latest firmware yeah. and typically it'll work. Yeah, actually, I, I, I don't know if you were in a room at the time, but I touched <coughs> okay. on, on the firmware, and everybody should be up to date on their own firmware. They probably need to talk to you about that. Um, it's a little tricky to update, but um, the most current, I, I put it in my PowerPoint it's in here, but I'll say what the most current cutting master is. Cutting master will automatically prompt you if there's another version. Anytime, anybody who's using Cutting Master, the window opens up, will say there's a more current version. If not, it'll say this is a current version already. 
Um, you just look at the version of Illustrator that you have, and then choose that update, and it'll update it to the most current version. It's pretty straightforward. Okay. Uh, the firmware on the cutter um, is 2.6 right now. Yeah, version 2.6. Um, um, so you just got to make sure you have 2.6. I think a 2.7 will be out soon. Um, but this version of 2.6 for the FC8600, uh, you have to have and the current version of Cutting Master for the new registration mark system that I'm going to show you. Okay. Um, so 2.6 improved all performances, much better improved uh, mark searching pattern, um, segment cutting, and uh, for thicker material and long length jobs. So you'll have, when you turn your cutter, it will prompt you and it'll say what the version is. Um, some of the discussion points here, um, we're going to go over the software, Cutting Master 2. Um, Cutting Master 2 is a, made by a different software manufacturer than Cutting Master 3. Okay. Um, we've kept Cutting Master 2 uh, for those people who just didn't want to migrate over to Cutting Master 3, but I think eventually Cutting Master 2 will probably disappear. So at some point, you probably want to download Cutting Master 3. Um, you can load both of them on your cutter on your, in your software. I have both Cutting Master 2 and 3 in Illustrator. Uh, you just can't run them simultaneously. Okay. So, uh, it's interesting. <laughs> Um, Cutting Master 2 and Cutting Master 3, the current version is 2.2.107. So when you open up Cutting Master 3, it prompts you that there's a new version. That's the most current version that you'll need to use this new uh, mark scan system. Okay. Um, Onyx, I'll have Aaron and, and Adam uh, talk about Onyx, but we have print cut obviously for Onyx. They don't have this new uh, registration mark system where you put the registration marks on the inside as opposed to the outside edge just yet. That's something that they're working on. GraphTech develops their products like Cutting Master and then all the other software manufacturers, Onyx or Caldera or the Wasatch, Flexi, they develop all their own drivers. So they have our SD600s and they develop drivers for those machines. So any changes that are made software changes, they actually will do it themselves, okay. software driver. Um, and I went through the list of, of uh, rips that we work with. All these companies have our driver, um, Onyx, Flexi, Elder, Wasatch, Sign Lab. So we work really close with all those software manufacturers. Okay, um, FC8600 with Cutting Master 2. The pre-cut setup is a little different than this one. Um, what we did in like an Illustrator Corel, uh, you set up your job with a, um, a one layer being your kiss cut layer and the other layer being your perf cut layer. And then down here you would just choose the condition number that uh, you want to send it to. So your kiss cut layer might be set up for condition one at the force to cut to the carrier sheet, right? And then condition two for the perf cut would be um, set up to be double the force, okay, and a dash line. And the dash line can be set up in here, the line type, or you can actually set the line type in on the cutter, okay? So line type would be a dash line, usually number seven or number two, and if I click on this, if I had this on, I click on it, it'd give me a list of different types of dash line styles and it would show me each type, okay? So for the perf cut line, I would choose usually two or seven, and I would have double the force. So if the force for a kiss cut is 20, the force for a perf cut would be about 40. Okay. So it's going to go through the kiss cut first, and then prompt you to move the blade holder from the forward position, which is cutting over the cutting strip, to the rear position, or the front position, and that'll do the perf cut over a channel instead of the cutting strip. Okay. That's how that's done on Cutting Master 2. And that's in our training CD, by the way, if anybody wants to go over that in the training CD, um, how to set that up. Um, perf cut on Cutting Master 3, and I'll show this one live because I have it loaded on here, um, but Cutting Master 3, um, what you'll do is you'll set up the job the same way in Illustrator Corel, where you can set it up by layer or set it up by color. 
Um, my one layer would be the kiss cut layer, and the second layer would be my first cut layer. And then I'll assign those layers to whatever condition I want to eight conditions on the cutter for one foot cut for doing the kiss cut, and the other condition for doing the first cut. Okay. Onyx Production House, I think I'll have Aaron go over that. Here. Okay, so some of the more advanced features, um, like ISM mode, intelligent scan mode, um, that slows, there's two modes for reading registration marks in the FC8600. One mode is the normal mode, which finds the registration marks at a pretty quick speed. The ISM mode really slows down the, the scanning of the registration marks. It, focuses and hunts for the registration mark, and that's for highly reflective. Is that the same on the 8,000? No. The 8,000, uh, that's, that's one mode? Yeah, it's one mode. And that's one thing when they change the main board on the 8,600, they, they don't have on the 8,000. It's uh, one mode. And, it's, and again, it's for highly reflective materials. So if you're doing print cut on prismatic or you know a, a chrome type material, that's what it's really meant for. There's another way around it. And you can reverse the registration marks. Now I can send you that information too. Um, reverse the registration marks. Instead of being the L-shaped registration mark, you have a black box with the media color uh, being the registration mark, the L-shape. Okay. So all four corners will be a black box with the L-shaped media color. And so you change the sensor so it reads the opposite. And that black box, uh, you know, eliminates the reflective. Uh, um, uh, you know, property of that particular vinyl that you're using. And that seems to be really effective. So you can use that in the 8,000 uh, if you want to do that. So one more step to do it, but um, it's really effective. Um, sensor adjusts. Um, so you can calibrate, and this is what I was saying, you can calibrate your, your sensor uh, for different types of media. And that's where I do a sensor adjust for doing the reverse registration marks. Um, panel cutting is for cutting really thick material. <coughs> So you can, let's say I'm cutting um, a prismatic or a um, sandblast mask, 50 mil sandblast mask. I could set up on the cutter, and it's, it's here in, how you actually activate it on this cheat sheet, to actually cut maybe every 12 inches, okay? So what that does is, let's say I have a, a, a rectangle that I'm cutting out on a 50 mil sandblast mask that's, you know, a good 5, 8 feet. And or a prismatic material, five, eight feet, and I want those lines to match up perfectly, right? <coughs> Otherwise, it might be mismatch at the very end. So panel cutting will just cut forward, and it'll cut and feed, cut and feed, like maybe every 12 inches or every six inches, however you set it up. And so there's a, a less media movement that way. And, you know, normally when you're cutting vinyl, it might go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. That's basically, it's cutting based on how you set up your job typically. And there, you can eliminate, eliminate kind of some of that media movement through the software, but it doesn't do it all, all the time. Well, that's what panel cutting does. It's, it's just eliminates the media movement and it pretty much cuts the human direction. So you're cutting for forward position. And a lot of softwares in the past, like FlexiSign or SignLab or Omega, had that feature in there. Um, and the guys that have been cutting prismat Prismatic, all well, the DOT guys, for years have been using that software to kind of cut that pattern. Otherwise, when they're cutting really long jobs, their media would slip, especially with the Prismatic material is very, very slippery, even with the extra push rollers on there. And so that feature we built into the firmware, so you don't necessarily <coughs> have to use Flexi or Lab or Omega, you just turn that feature on. Yeah. But does that, does that cut right back into the previous panel by how far, or is it? It just continues to cut, and so there's like there's no like slicing. It just keeps on cutting, and, and it slows it way down. Yes, yeah. You know, because you're only cutting forward, so it cuts, 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 and moves, cuts, 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 and moves forward, and so it's much slower. But <coughs> you don't have to worry about media slope like you would normally. And that's, like I said, it's so I, I do a lot of, uh, on the uh, sand mask of 25 mil, and yeah. it's tough to do. I can't do a big piece. Yeah. So yeah. probably, I, so I, mean, I would, <coughs> yeah, I would definitely, it, I don't know if ISM's on the 8,000, 8, if they actually added that, but do you have um, FlexiSign, um, Sign Lab, Omega, any of those programs? No, I just use uh, just Illustrator with the master. Cut, the cutting master? Cutting master. 
I'll have to I'll have to check to see if they've actually added that for another eight thousand. Because that's something that we've had for about a year now, I think. The ISF mode, or the, um, the panel cutting mode. Yeah, but yeah, but usually what I do is I, I actually will do a, a panel cut. Yeah. I mean, I might go up 28 inches or 30 inches and then I'll pick up again. And yeah, and just and section off in panels, yeah. And basically this, in the firmware, you just say, yeah, I want to cut every six inches and that's what will be cutting it cutting out that way. And again, we had so many people ask about it because there were a fair amount of people now that want to illustrate or corral and not using maybe Flexi or Sign Lab or Omega. And so they wanted that feature built into our firmware. That's what we did. And otherwise, in the past, we'd be good for Flexi. Um, smart feed. Um, we have a couple of different smart feed programs where you actually could do like a pre-feed, and I'll go over that. It'll actually feed out the material and then come back and start cutting. And what that does is it kind of puts a track in the vinyl, so it, it gives it a good area to start working with. Uh, and plus, you kind of know um, it pulls the vinyl off the roll, pull, the post that you have, and you have to spool the vinyl off the roll. Okay. And then we'll talk about the push roller tension. Um, there's different tensions in the back of the push roller, 8,000s, 8,600s. Um, you can set the tension to be light or to be real heavy, you know, depending on the material that you're cutting. Okay, so ISM mode, the intelligent scan mode. ISM reduces the scan time and increases the mark scanning success. This is how it reduces it, because the, instead of hunting and maybe missing it, not finding it, it'll really focus on that registration mark and highly reflective material. <coughs> Registration marks are also detectable on color material, texture material, media such as glossy laminates. Um, so this is what the menu looks like in, in going into ISM mode. And again, it's right here on your cheat sheet. You go to menu, you go to arms, you go to sensing speed, ISM mode, and it increases scanning success um, for glossy laminates. So if you ever need to do that in glossy laminates, you just uh, look up the ISM mode and it's, it's referenced right there. Sensor adjustment, you can adjust the sensitivity of the sensor. Um, we had talked about reversing the registration mark of really highly reflective material. That's where you would want to do that. It's looking for a, a darker registration mark. Um, so, that's a sense adjust again is in here and how to activate it. And for example, you have a white mark that can be detected on colored background. Okay, So, if your registration mark just looking for contrast is basically what they're doing. Instead of a black mark on a lighter background, you could look for a white mark on a darker background. Okay. That's it, called sensor adjust. Panel cutting. Um, panel cutting is kind of a, a, a long print cut job that you can set up. So if I'm doing, let's say, a print cut on prismatic material, um, and it used, it gives her of segment registration marks where there's sideway T's. Okay. So our machines will read the four point registration marks with the L shaped registration marks. And also in Cutting Master, you can use the, and I'll print and cut over here, the segment registration marks. You have the four point registration marks, but in between you have these sideway <coughs> T registration marks, so the cutter will check itself all the way down. It's especially used for long jobs, okay? With this panel cutting, what I can do for longer jobs, I'm cutting, let's say, a motocross lamb, or I have a printed cut job on um, the prismatic material, it, it'll, instead of reading all four points of registration marks, it'll read the first maybe six inches. So it'll read the first two registration marks and the segment registration marks and cut that area. And then it'll read the second set of reg registration marks, it's called segment registration marks, and cut that area. So I'll keep on just cutting six inches at a time, but this is a pretty cut application, not just cut. And that's meant for, again, really thick material, material that wants to skew, okay? So that's kind of a printed cut application for very thick material, called panel cutting. Okay, smart feed. We have had this feature for many, many years. We have a pre-feed um, where you can actually set maybe machine to pre-feed 10 feet of material every time you, you cut. So you just go in the machine, feed out 10 material, and it pulls material off the roll, comes back, and then it's ready to start cutting. Um, people use that for feeding off the heavy rolls. If you ever had a really heavy roll, and you're cutting at a higher rate of speed, and it jerks the roll, and then you get a, a error message, you have to restart the machine. 
well, the pre-feed, instead of spooling off by hand the material, feeds it out, comes back, and then it's ready to start cutting. It's called pre-feed. We do that for really like the fat head type applications. We've got, got a lot of guys that are cutting, you know, whole body lengths and they're doing 50 feet of that, right? So they'll do a pre feed, comes out, and comes back, and it has looped enough material for them to cut their job. Okay. We also have auto pre feed. Um, basically, it looks at the software and the job that you have in the software, and it'll feed out what. Uh, you have um, your, how large your job is built for that particular uh, feed. So if you have, let's say, a 10-foot job, it's going to feed out 10 feet, come back and start cutting. That's auto pre-feed. And then the initial pre-feed will feed out whatever you're setting, your, your page length setting <coughs> on a cutter. Usually the default page length setting on a cutter is about 1,000 feet. Okay? But you could set it up to be maybe 25 feet, and it'll feed out 25 feet and start cutting. Okay? Most people don't use that. Can I just make one point on that? Um, I've had a lot of customers call and say that when they bring their jobs in, it cuts off half their graphic. And a good portion of the time, if you go into your page length, it's just shortened out, like yeah. six feet or five feet or whatever. Yep. You're trying to cut 10 feet, and it's shortened down to four feet, so it's cutting your graphic in half. So anytime you see that, that's a good place to start is that page length. Yeah, page length. We had that problem more in the past, I think. Um, uh, people are having uh, a lower page length. I don't know why, but the default is set to a thousand right now, so we don't run into it uh, that often. And I try to steer people away from using initial feed, use auto print feed instead, because once you change your page length, maybe to six feet or something like that, and you have a 20 foot job, yeah, it'll stop cutting at six feet. Yep. So I would use pre feed and auto pre feed if you're going to use that automatic feed function. Otherwise, and again, if you have a heavy goal or just off the roll, don't. Um, auto pre-feed, that's only available with Cutmaster, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't recognize on any other software. Right, right. Exactly. That's so. where you just go in and hit uh, um, the um, uh, pre-feed. Pre-feed, yeah. set the distance that you want to pre-feed out, and then it'll feed out whatever five feet, six feet, however many feet you want to feed Okay, so the 8600 push roller or 8000 push roller pressure as well. Um, on the outer ones, you have a high and a medium. Okay, so you can uh, adjust the push rollers to uh, high force at the bottom and then medium force at the, at the top. Um, I don't know. The outer, I usually just use high force, just to try to keep the drill from from wandering. But if you're cutting edge to edge, you may not want that material marked up, especially when you're using that expand feature. Okay? And that's why expand is never turned on. You have to turn it on, because if you're going to cut edge to edge, you're going to be cutting in where the wheels are tracking and marking it up. So you might have to lighten up the, the force. <coughs> Maybe your job can't be that long. But anyway, so you have the tension on the back of the cutter where you can actually adjust the tension for the push rollers. In the middle, you have a high, medium, and low tension. Um, so if, if you're, you have a pre-cut job, you don't want much force on rolling over your printed job, mark it up, or maybe set it to low. Um, things to do at the end of the day is to um, make sure that you release the lever at the end of the day so there's no pressures on the push rollers. Um, keep your um, wheels and grip rollers clean. And Adam, you might suggest um, uh, alcohol, right, for cleaning, cleaning that up. Usually it's not too bad anymore, but sometimes vinyl you know, adhesive can get on there. Um, ground for static. Um, well, static is probably an issue out here, I imagine. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a huge enemy for us. Um, so just be careful with static because, you know, people have pulled off with, like, main boards that have gone out because of it. So um, Adam probably can tell you more stories than, than I can, but. Just, just be talking to some stat, static electricity. I've um, seen, I've seen people walk up to the screen, touch the screen, it zaps them. All of a sudden, their whole machine just shuts down. Wow. <laughs> so, yeah, static's bad out here. Yeah, yeah. Imagine being a desert. Um, uneven cutting depth, and I've, you know, I've seen this from time to time. Sometimes they can walk in the shop, and people will have not changed their cutting depth. 20 years that they've had machine. So there's a cutting mat, and if you do your test cuts and use the right pressure, you don't 
you know, put out too much blade, you should be good. You don't really mess up the cutting mat. But you know, if you make a mistake, cut too deep, cut into the cutting mat, and you have a lot of marks in that cutting mat, you got to replace it. You know, um, you guys stock them here, Adam? Yeah. No. Most of them. Most of them. There, so you can you know call up Adam and say, hey, you know my cutting mat has a lot of cuts in it. It'll affect tracking. It'll, it'll affect your cut quality. Okay, so just just be aware of that. It's not an expensive item either. Um, and then uh, your tool set to um, CB09U not pen. Um, there's a lot of people that just kind of turn on the machine and whatever the blade setting that is set to, that's what they use. Um, you got to make sure because the offset for a pen is completely different than the offset for a CBU-09 blade, which is a 45 degree blade. Okay, and then we have another offset for a different type of blade. So make sure you use the right blade for you know the condition number that you're cutting to. So if you're using a CBU-09 blade, it's a standard blade that comes with the machine, the blue tip blade holder. Make sure that the machine says CBU-09. And I'll show you in, in, when I send the cut job out from my, from my illustrator. And then, again, we talked about positioning in the media street. Um, when I do print cut jobs, sometimes it's hard to position it with that, lining it up on the side. So I, I usually feel the front edge of, of the, uh, the cutter with the registration mark to make sure they're lined up and lock it down that way. And I can show you how we do that in here, too. That's, that works really well for sheets. <coughs> um, things not to do on the SC8600, do not extend the blade too far. People extend it as far out as possibly go in and ask me why, why the cut quality is horrible. Just need a little bit of that blade exposed. Um, don't set your force too high. You obviously do a test cut to determine the depth to set too high. You can cut all the through the material plus to the uh, Don't always assume the cutter hardware is the problem. A lot of times we'll run into issues with computers or software issues or driver issues. Third party, we always check if you have, let's say, maybe a, a, a problem that you're not understanding if it's a cutter or if it's software, we always check with Cutting Master first because we have control of that software. We know the drivers, we know the current updates and all the problems or issues that it might have. We don't know Flexi or Onyx or Hildero, what problems they might have. So if there's an issue, we try to narrow it down by using Cutting Master and Illustrator. If it works with that, machine works with that, chances are great that it's you know, the third party software. Maybe you need to update it to a more current version. You know, maybe they changed their um, software to a more current version that could break other things. I work for a software company too in the past and when they come out with a new release, sometimes it'll break other things. Uh, that was working fine. So, just um, if you call us up or you talk to Aaron, we'll always do testing with Cutting Master first, try to determine if it's hardware or the problem. Um, don't change the offset quality. Just leave it on one or two the best cutting quality. And um, when in doubt, uh, you can do a factory reset. We talked to Adam about that, but that's usually the last. You know, push out there and then we set everything to zero. Sometimes you might get somebody in there, or maybe you hire somebody new and they're playing around with the machine and they change the settings, not quite sure what they did. Then you do a reset and start all over again. Um, some resources that we have, additional resources, we have videos. We mentioned the CD, it covers a lot of this information. If you go to our website, graphtechamerica.com, we have FAQs on graphtechamerica.com that goes over a lot of the common, commonly asked questions. Um, make sure you go to graphicamerica.com and not Graphic Corp, otherwise it'll wind up in our Japanese, <coughs> Japanese website. So, um, Cutting Master Graphic Studio, all the drivers are um, available on our website. Cutting Master Graphic Studio will automatically tell you there's an <coughs> update and then you can update based on the software that you're using. Uh, Cutting Master 2, you'd have to download it. Um, you can always download Cutting Master 3 if you don't have it for free. Um, all of our software we provide for free when you don't charge it, and um, you can try it. You know. So if you want to download Cutting Master 3, make sure you have Cutting Master 2 shut down, make sure you have Illustrator 12 shut down, 
download it, open it up, and you know, run the program, and then you'll see Cutting Master 3 loaded in Illustrator Corel under above usually Cutting Master 3. Um, if you've got uh, two installed, you need to install it before you. No, you can you can use I, either or. You just can't run them simultaneously. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but I have I have both programs. So <coughs> I was I was a little reluctant knowing Cutting Master Two um, to jump into Cutting Master Three like we all are usually with software. Um, but you know, when <coughs> I start using Cutting Master Two or Cutting Master Three, it, you know, I saw the huge benefits to it. One of the major benefits of the software is like even connecting Ethernet. I'm connected to the here. We just typed in the uh, the the um, number on that machine, and it came up right away. It was really easy to set up. Uh, when you plug in the machine, it automatically switched for it. So you ask Adam because I was surprised. I don't have the Ethernet cutter. Mine, yeah, I know you don't have it. I don't have Ethernet on mine. But the other thing you might want to try is a print server, because we used to do that in the past. Is uh, hook up a print server. I'm actually just uh, going through that machine from another desk. It's working. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So you just go right through. It's like setting up real printers on the LPG board and run it that way, but it's it's just frustrating sometimes not to have it on the board. It's not as consistent. Yeah. You know, we used to use print servers on your know, older machines at trade shows, and that's kind of one way we got around it. You know. So, but the Ethernet connection is is nice. I wish I had a more current machine as well. So. All right. So, I'm going to run this uh, YouTube video on our registration marks. It doesn't have any audio other than music, but at least you'll get the idea how to set it up. Okay, so basically what he's doing is he's creating a, a box with inside the, uh, the um, artwork instead of on the outside. Okay, so he's just drawing a box. And that box becomes a reference point for the registration marks using Cutting Master 3. This is So notice the registration marks are on the inside. He's using segment registration marks on this. And we sell super high speed printers. <laughs> See, now you're maximizing your media of not having the registration marks all the way to the edge. Did you say that the uh, uh, those uh, registration marks? That's the ability on the eight thousand two. That uh, eighty six hundred. Yeah, that's it just oh. came out too, but it's it's a feature. I mean, you can yeah. give it a try, but well, it's just it's tough to, Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't waste as much vinyl sometimes. It's, yeah, that's true. I mean, it's <laughs> and, you know I don't know if we fully tested it in the house, um, so you can give it a try and see if it works. I mean, just update the current cutting master and draw out the box and drop in the registration marks on the little piece and see if it does it. Um, but I was told no, but I don't know if they necessarily tested it. What was this feature called again where you move it inside? You know, I, I don't even know right. if we have a name for it yet. Right. <laughs> it's just, uh, it's, 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 you, it's, it's a segment or regular registration marks, but it's on the inside right. instead. So you're drawing it out in Illustrator, and then in Cutting Master, you're choosing the to put the registration marks on the artwork on okay. the box. Do you make a cut path or anything? Um, just like box? you, just like no, you so know, that's actually it's not cutting. So yeah. it's just where the registration marks are being placed. Okay. Like you know, before when you click on registration marks and drop it in, uh, um, based on yeah, I know. your design. <laughs> this time you're drawing it, and uh, was that a through cut or a proof cut? That that, that was that dinosaurs. Um, that was uh, it would have had to have been a perfect perf cut. Because yeah. he popped it out. What was that YouTube uh, uh, link? Yeah, I remember what that was. I mean, there's a few on there. I sent it to Aaron. Adam, do you have it too? 
Maybe it's a perforated cutting. Yeah, I don't know if we can forward it out. We'll, we'll forward it in an email <laughs> tomorrow. I'll um, <coughs> I sent it to Aaron, so um, I'll have him with the PowerPoint presentation send you guys the um, YouTube presentation. And we'll have something. Th that was very rough. Like I said, this is the first day I've actually even used it. So um, at some point, we'll put it together in training and, and um, on, our, on our website, the training video. Any other questions? We'll go out to the cutter. Real quick, do, yep. do you happen to know if you can adjust the gap or the distance off the box to your registration marks? Off the box. Yeah, you built the box and then you go and you add your registration oh. marks. Well, he said <coughs> I, can, I can move the registration, the, I can move the, the um, artwork around the registration marks. So After I, you've applied the registration yeah, marks? Yeah, or even delete some of the artwork if I need to. So if I put in the registration marks and there's no way around the box, you know, wherever I decide to put the box on the inside, and I don't know how far in you can go, he didn't give me a limitation. Um, but he said that you would not actually move the <coughs> registration marks once they're applied. You'd have to move the, the image. Wow. You know, so you can maybe nudge the image a little bit over and then do the cut that way. We'll have to play around with it. We're still experimenting with it. Like I said, today is my first day using it, so I don't. Uh, yeah, I'm going to open up Illustrator. Okay. Okay, so this is um, the segment registration marks. You notice the registration marks are on the inside. You just drew a box and had the segment and regular registration marks applied on the inside. Before I send it, turn off the artwork. So I'll need the vector pass. Okay. File. Notice I have Cutting Master 2 at the bottom here. It's Cutting Master 3. So <coughs> three. Software tells me that there aren't any available updates because they have the most current version. Automatically pulling to the, uh, the cutter so it knows the um, size of the material that's already loaded on the machine. I have my weed border here. I, if I have weed border, they don't usually use that for print cut, but I can I put in weed borders to cut across or <coughs> horizontal or diagonal, whatever I want. If you guys ever use that, it's a useful tool for weeding. My tiling features are in here. Matrix copies. If I want to do you know I'll several rows of rows of these, I can add that in there. And so I typically cut by layer, you can cut by color, turn off any weed lines that I have in there. My kiss cut is always on top of my perf cut. Okay, so you want to kiss cut before perf because if I perf cut for, for the first, it's going to weaken the material. It's perforated through the the back of the right. So you want to kiss cut. It's always going to be on top. I also want to assign the condition that I'm going to actually do the kiss cut. So condition <coughs> one is going to be my kiss cut. I've already set up a cutter. I did my test cut to determine you know, the proper depth, the force that I need. And then same with my perf cut. I did a test cut to determine the proper force of that. So condition one is my kiss cut. Condition two is my perf cut. All right. And then last, open up the cutter window. Condition one checks the cutter to see what the force is and the speed. This is pretty much where I left it right here. Speed of 50, the force of 20. I'm using the right blade, CB09U, okay? And if I scroll down, if I was cutting you know, maybe a prismatic material or a very thick laminate, I would probably turn on move one for <coughs> tangential undulation, all right? And condition two, have a force about double, a little bit over double the, the force of, of the kiss cut, okay? I'm using a perforated line on condition two. It's telling me perforation cutting, right? And so I can even increase the speed if I want here. So I increase the speed of the cutter. Okay, so I'm, I'm all set up and ready to go. Can you add a pause in between those? <coughs> Can you add a pause in between those? If you were doing, well, if you were changing blade position to yeah, go to the gap, so you would do that. So it would automatically do it. 
Yeah. So typically, the... if you look, if you look at our training video, it will tell you to set up a pause on the cutter. Okay. So you can actually go on the cutter and set up um, um, the sign uh, tool. It's called assign tool, right? It's, it's right on here. Called assign tool. So condition one, I have it set for tool one, which is the back cutting over the cutting screen. Okay, that's the back position. And then condition two, whatever condition you choose, I would tell the cutter I want that to be tool three, the forward position. Okay. So when I send the job through Cutting Master, whatever software I'm using, I'm saying condition one is going to be the, the back cutting strip position, and then condition two is gonna be the forward position. And when it finishes cutting all the kiss cuts, it'll pause and beep, the machine will pause and beep and beep. Get to back the nut out, remove the blade holder, put it in forward position, lock the nut down again, and hit the enter key on the cutter, and then it'll do the perforation cut over the channel, okay? That's what the video will do. Now, that's, that's great. Um, but it's time consuming. So if you do short runs, if you're gonna cut, you're not gonna cut really thick laminates or anything like that, you, in, in the, depending on the vinyl too, some of the vinyl is more flexible than others, but I like the Orkel and all that stuff seems to work pretty good. Um, I set it up to cut over the channel, both the kiss cut and the first cut, okay? So I don't have to switch it. And we do that at the trade shows a lot too. It saves tons of time. So if you know that you can do a short run, we'll show you the short run we're doing here. You can set it up, the machine, to just cut over the trough for that purposes. If you're cutting really intricate stuff, definitely cut over the cutting strip, really small text. You know, again, really thick material. You have to have that resistance from the cutting strip, but just cutting vinyl stickers is pretty straightforward. Okay. So I guess um, we can walk in there and I'll send the job and you guys can... How the class goes at uh, informative, good information. Good. So the nice thing, and you probably talked about this, it's going through the segments, right? So printing your first set of crop marks, of registration marks, and it will actually place those segment marks, those T registrations down the media as it goes along and it will help it register all the way down. So right now it's finding him and it's going to go through. He's got it on condition one and in the inside track. And I don't know if you guys saw that on the cutter or if you have it on your cutter. There's an inside track right here. You've got your cut strip where your blade usually rides along. There's a front track right in front of it where you set it to do your perforation cut. So it's just a deep channel that allows that. Huh? Yeah, he's got, so what he actually did is usually you move your blade from your back setting over the top of your cut strip, you move it into that channel to run your first cut. In shorter runs, maybe thinner materials, just your regular vinyls and stuff, one of the things they do just to save some time is he actually just put it right into the channel and he's cutting through the vinyl without it sitting on the backing, and then he doesn't have to move that to the front or to the other channel to do the perforation. So it's all in one, but it's kind of nice. So it's going to run through right now do these cuts and then it'll come back and perfect right after them. Yeah, if you typically have a material that is thicker or a laminate that's tougher to get through, it may not work because you're going to push the material straight down into the trough. So you have to be, from this is a good example right here, yeah, if you're just cutting both the decal for somebody, that's going to be perfect. I've also turned on the expand pressure, so yeah. it's cutting very close to the exit. I just want to make sure it's cut in and soft or otherwise you can pop up. Oh, yeah, it's good. Yeah. So I'm going to get Yeah, I'm pretty sure you have to do that. I'm going to get one of those, yeah. I'm going to do And you're talking about those registrations to get inside. So if I had to pause for this before, I'd have to move it to the board position. If it wasn't inside that channel, yeah, that's the so the machine would stop and tell you to move your blade to the forward position. So it pause, take your blade out, move it to the, the forward track of that, and hit enter and start running again. This is just a quicker solution. You definitely don't want to do it in really, really long runs or in your thicker, heavier feet. Yeah, X rollers are about 255 a piece. 
install it, although the price is getting small. Yeah. Once they come in, it just recognizes wherever you have it. So there's a there's a rack on the back of it. So once they slide those, it recognizes there's one on there. So as soon as it engages and is over the top of one of your pixels and one of your peripherals, it'll recognize that it's in there. The two, right? Yeah. Everything in between. I mean, it had notes that they're there, but the two that really make the difference, like I can disengage these two and bring them down to my scan line, and they just run these two, and it'll still recognize that one, right? But what it recognizes my new is not too many. So if we add an extra pixels, we put them right in here, and those two would still be my two pixels. So it's still very long. How do you adjust the pressure? 